Hey guys, Esports John here. Recently, I have been hanging out in the Foreigner Discord, realizing that a lot of people really don't know a lot of the basics of this game, and a lot of resources that used to be available to us are kind of piled down under 10 years of internet. People, you know, just don't really know the basics anymore, and there aren't very clear resources. So, this video is an attempt to go ahead and start working on that. Today, we're going to be doing something very simple. We're going to be learning about the nine pool in ZVP, just how to open that way. So this is our builds for noobs. This is our very first episode, and hopefully you guys can get some useful information for this that will help you in your gameplay and allow you to improve rather rapidly. Let's go ahead and jump into the game. I'm just going to go ahead and describe everything that I'm going to be doing in here, just in detail. Oh. Actually, one thing real quick before I do that. Let's go ahead and look at my nice little graphic here that I've done in our trusty handy dandy notepad. So to put this very simply, this is going to be our build. We're going to be having a nine overlord. We're going to have, have a nine pool before we build any drones. And then we're just going to build three drones followed by three sets of lings and an overlord at some point. Very easy to remember. And eventually we are looking towards getting that three hatch gas so that we can go into our mid game very strongly. So this is very basic, very easy to understand. And I will just go ahead and guide you through this build as we go. I'll talk a little bit about build divergence in a bit, but for right now, just worry about this opening nine overlord, nine pool. We're gonna make three drones, three lings, and eventually an overlord. So. We are going ahead and going to go into this. I'll just explain things in detail as I go along. So, our first overlord is going to scout in the direction of the closest natural. That is very important. Our first overlord wants to be able to get to the natural as soon as possible and get some information, as well as just kind of set up outside that natural. Usually there's some sort of place where they can hang out chill out and get some scouting information. So on Circuit Breaker, which is the map we're on, it's always going to be in this vertical position. It varies from map to map depending on where the closest natural is. For instance, on Fighting Spirit, it's always going to be... You're always going to want to scout clockwise with your first Overlord, and on something like Python, you might want to scout cross map or uh, just to the closest place to you. So there's just different ways, you just have to know the maps. We're going to be droning up to 9. Now that we have 9, we're going to be looking to build an Overlord as soon as we can. So there it is. If you are new to this game, always build your Overlord on 9. It's proven to be a lot more cost efficient, so just make sure you build it on 9 instead of that 8. If you come from StarCraft 2, sometimes you built it 1 early. So we're going to be building up a lot of minerals. Normally this would be so that we can build a couple drones when they come out of here. But in this particular case, we're going to use it to build an early pool instead before our overlord finishes when it's right at about 90% or so. And we're just going to build drones as our money allows. The second overlord is just going to hang out in front of our natural right over here. We're just going to be building drones as our money allows up to three. All right. So just remember that number. Only build three. First drone out is going to scout out in the opposite direction of our first overlord. So our first overlord went northways, so our drone is going to be scouting west, try to get information from our opponent's base. So we built our three drones. Third drone is actually going to be going down to our natural. Let's go ahead and get some. Uh, get ready to go ahead and build a hatchery down there as soon as possible. Now, this is where we run into our first interesting divergence point, because if our opponent has a probe in our base already, has a probe in our natural, it can be very frustrating to try to get this hatchery down, especially if you're a new player, because you just want to put down your hatchery. You've got 250 minerals, right? You want to go ahead and put down the hatchery as soon as you get 300. It's okay. It's fine. With this build, we get an early enough pool so that we can go ahead and build a couple of lings. And we can deal with whatever our opponent puts up against us. If they put a pylon block there, no problem. We have six lings coming out. It's not a big deal. All right. So if there is a probe down here, we're just going to attack it with our drone. Make sure we don't lose our drone. But just go ahead and get a little bit of chip damage on that probe. 
And then we're just going to build three sets of links. If we have to change out this drone, if this drone gets really, really low, we can just send it back to our main base to send out a fresh drone to go ahead and get ready to take this expansion. And it works just as fine. So we're going to go ahead and build this as if there wasn't a probe there. We'll say our opponent scattered a second. So we're going to get a little bit of leeway. And we're just going to build our lings one at a time until we get to three sets of lings. This is really where the second part of our build is, or our build divergence is really going to come into effect because right now we have scattered out both sides of the map at the same time with our overlord and our drone. Right now we have information on both the closed positions. We haven't quite seen the far away position, but we have information on both closed positions. If we scout our opponent here, we can find out what they're going to be doing which allows us to go ahead and diverge into our second set of stuff that we can do. So this is versus all the sort of things that we could be going up against. A Nexus first, a Forge Fast Expand, Gateway first, or a Two Gate of some kind. Versus Nexus, uh, sorry, versus Forge Fast Expand. We'll just go ahead and start there since this is the most common. This is what you will normally see is you get there, there's going to be a pylon, there's going to be a forge. That is a forge fast expand in the natural. Easy peasy. You can just stop at those first six lanes, continue to build drones, and get a 16 overlord, go for a lair first. All right? If you're versus someone who's a little bit greedier, goes for this nexus first, you're still probably going to want to stop at six lanes and... Try to poke around and do a little bit of damage since they won't have a cannon up. Some people will just go ahead and floodlings. You can do that as well. But if you're a newer player, just stick on the safe side and go ahead and transition a little bit earlier. If your opponent is being super greedy with their wall off, go ahead and go for the speed first. And go ahead and break that with a bunch of links. Otherwise, go for the lair first and just go into a normal game. Versus a gateway first, our build begins to diverge a little bit more from the standard. We're not going to be going into uh, that immediate fast layer. We're not going to be trying to get uh, a very thriving economy up. Instead, we're just going to get a lot of lings, make sure that we're safe. We're going to build a slightly later overlord to compensate for the fact that we don't have those extra drones mining in the early game. And then we're going to go for speed first so we can gain map control and prevent our opponent from really doing a lot of damage with early zealots. The same thing goes for 2-gate. Two 2-gate two is really technically the same build, but we need a sunken at the natural. It is, whether you're up against a 2-gate in the natural or a 2-gate in the center of the map, a proxy 2-gate, you need the sunken at your natural just to make sure you're safe. Versus only one gateway, no sunken. You'll be fine with just pure lanes. But against 2, definitely got to get that sunken down as soon as your natural finishes. Make sure you're safe. Now, one thing I skipped over intentionally, but I want to come back to is if your opponent has only one cannon, you can kill it. Because the, of the way this build opens, you get a lot of lings early out. Sorry, you get a lot of lings out very early, and your opponent can't really stop it with one cannon. If your opponent is greedy and only builds one cannon, six lings can actually run in there and snipe it and do a lot of damage. And if your opponent does only build one cannon, doesn't build the second cannon, continues on with their build as normal, Go ahead and continue building links and go into this gateway first build where you get an 18 overlord and speed first because you can start putting on some serious pressure and actually uh, killing your opponent off very early on. So in this particular case, I'm just going to show you guys whoops, what it looks like if we scout our opponent. We scout them inside their base. Also, I guess I forgot to mention this, but if they're on a one base build, if there's nothing in the natural, they're building off a one base, we just do our gateway build. Easy peasy. So we're going to pretend that we scout in here, and for the sake of examples, since I, I don't really want to go down both these route, routes at this particular moment in time, I'm just going to show you guys what you do versus the gateway first, because this tends to be the harder one to deal with otherwise you just drone and go up to a lair but against a gateway first we are actually just going to be doing things a little bit differently so i'm gonna go ahead and pull this drone all the way back home we're gonna continue building wings up to eight to uh 12 so far we have eight coming out we're, just, we're gonna go up to 10 just to be a little bit safe
We're gonna reshuffle our overlords. Not a huge deal if you don't do this, but just gonna continue building lots and lots of lings and moving them out across the map, just to make sure that we have the pressure versus our uh, gateway first players. So say they have a, a zealot out here, we're gonna fight and tussle with that a little bit. Whatever. And in the meanwhile, uh, once we get up to these ten lings, we're just gonna be building drones. We're gonna get our gas and our third hatch up as soon as we can. So at this point in time, we are doing absolutely fantastic. We've got everything we need. We can hold off uh, about three zealots and a probe with this. We have a lot of things as long as we get a good surround and uh, micro well. We can just find shape and then add stuff onto gas. Because we went for all those early links, we don't have the economy to support going for the lair first, getting that overlord at 16. So instead, we're actually going to build it on 18, which seems a little bit weird, but it is very, very normal. We're actually even going to be getting our link speed first. And usually you pull off uh, two drones after doing this, just to make sure that you have a little bit more economy going into the next part of the game. So there's our overlord. And then we're just going to be go building uh, fairly standard. Usually you follow up with a couple of hydras into this build, but this way we are completely safe. We've got our three bases. We're going to have link speed on the way soon. So if our opponent tries to go for some sort of crazy follow up build, we have a lot of larvae that we can use to flood in a bunch of links. They're going to have speed up uh, very soon, and uh, we can potentially bust that. Likewise, if our opponent's playing very greedy at the front, we can also bust that as well. So, that is basically the 9 overpool in a nutshell, how to deal with a little bit of that early pressure. If you guys want to see some games versus some actual link, um, sorry, zealot pressure early on, I suggest going and watching Hero versus, I believe it was, I can't remember off the top of my head, but if you guys want to go see somebody a, a pro deal with that pressure very very easily get a good example of that you can go back watch the asl watch heroes games from the round of 24 and you'll see that hero is really really good at doing this particular build holding off that link or that zealot pressure and going into a very nice three hatch hydra build that makes them very very comfortable otherwise we go into very standard macro game off the back of this 10 or nine nine over pool in ZVP is the backbone. It is very, very solid in this matchup. If you're just now beginning, if you're fairly new to the game, or you can't quite figure out this matchup, whatever the reason, try out this build, learn these different branches that you can do, and you'll feel a lot more comfortable, I promise. So thanks guys for watching, and I will be back with some more builds coming next week. Thanks so much, have a wonderful day, later.